It's Hendrick Motorsports eliminated from the NASCAR Cup Series this season. What was the team accused of? And how did Kyle Larson top the scoreboard last weekend? Is it because of the team's use of a loophole or because of the next-gen cars? Want to know what's going on? Then, stay with us till the end of the NASCAR zone to get updated. But before we dive into that, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Hendrick Motorsports was already in a precarious position, heading into Sunday's United 500 at Phoenix Raceway. The stock car racing powerhouse was doing its best to get ready for the race, but it was well aware that its star driver, Chase Elliott, would not be able to participate because he is still recovering from an accident he suffered while snowboarding. The priority for the organization should have been making sure that Elliott's normal Xfinity Series substitute, Jordan Berry, was prepared to drive the number 9 Chevrolet Camaro in Elliott's place. They didn't have to win by a landslide, but they did need to put in a good performance and make sure they didn't lose any ground. Instead of what they expected, they were hit with a curveball that nobody saw coming. According to NASCAR.com, during the routine inspection that took place on Friday, NASCAR officials discovered that all four Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet Camaros possessed hood louvers that may be in violation of the guidelines established by the league. These Chevrolet Camaros were the number 9 with Barry, the number 5 with Kyle Larson, the number 48 with Alex Bauman, and the number 24 with William Byron. Even though the Hendrick race cars were permitted to use the louvers during practice, the parts in question were taken away after the preliminary session at the one-mile track, and Hendrick Motorsports was allowed to continue competing in the event. We did, you know, take some parts from the Hendrick cars. It's not uncharted waters, as you guys know, that's been around the sport for many years. Uh, from time to time, we will take parts off cars. Uh, we'll bring them back here to the R&D center. We'll take a deeper dive into them to make sure they're in compliance. And if they're not, then we'll, you know, we'll move forward from there. We're still collecting information on that. Uh, and on the timeline, uh, it was, uh, you know, Friday afternoon, uh, just before practice, uh, was getting ready to start, and uh, we didn't have all the information we needed at the time, so we allowed the teams to go ahead and practice. And once practice was over, uh, then we, you know, got with them. Uh, they were very respectful and cordial, and uh, we collected those parts, and um, they replaced them and, and uh, went out and had, a you know, a great weekend. Penalties will be announced prior to the M Better Help 400 which will take place at Atlanta Motor Speedway if the parts do not pass the evaluation conducted by NASCAR. But before we move further, let's get to know what exactly is an engine hood louvre. Hood louvres, also known as vents or hood apertures, are simply vents or openings that serve as the exit point for the ducts that carry air out of the radiator and away from the vehicle. While examining a three-dimensional rendering of the next-gen vehicle, one can see that the air release mechanisms were designed to isolate the performance of the engine from the aerodynamics of the vehicle. So, what are the possible consequences for a NASCAR equipment violation? According to NBC Sports, Steve O'Donnell, executive vice president of NASCAR and chief racing development officer, issued a warning to the entirety of the lead the previous year that penalties will be ratcheted up. According to NBC Sports, NASCAR considers modifications made to a next-gen, single-source fender, part and L2 penalty, which could carry any of the fines. A loss of 75 points for the driver and or the owner of the team. A loss of 10 points in the playoffs for the driver and or the team owner. A four-race suspension for a certain member of the crews. A $100,000 fine. Should the severity of the modification penalty be deemed sufficient to warrant escalating it to an L3 infraction, drivers and teams face even harsher punishment, which may include the options like a loss of 120 points for the driver and or the owner of the team, a loss of 25 points in the playoffs for the driver and slash or the team owner, a race suspension for a particular crew member for a period of six races, a $25,000 fine. So what kind of problems did the drivers of Hendrick Motorsports run through because they were missing the hood lovers? Hendrick Motorsports continued to be dominant, despite the fact that NASCAR officials had removed the parts in question, which had the potential to throw off the racing attitude of the drivers. Larson won the pole position, 
and Byron went on to win the official race on Sunday. This was Byron's second Cup Series win in a row this year. In point of fact, Hendrick Motorsports was unable to allow themselves to be diverted from their primary objective. As a result, they were able to dominate the competition on Sunday to such an extent that the team's drivers, Larson and Byron, were in the lead position for a combined total of 83.6% of the race's 317 laps. All three teammates from Hendrick Motorsports finished in the top 10, with Larson coming in fourth, Bauman in ninth, and Barry in 10th position respectively. What are your thoughts on the kind of penalties or suspensions Hendrick Motorsports could be looking at? Let us know in the comments section below. And also, do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more updates. After the whole inspection, what does Hendrick Motorsports have to say about the taking away? After the main race on Sunday, Jeff Gordon, the vice chairman of Hendrick Motorsports, provided his response to the news that NASCAR authorities had removed hood louvers from all four of the team's competing race cars. Just how much of a concern is having parts taken, just even if it's for further evaluation, especially in this era where because of the single supplier issue that the penalties can be significantly more severe than maybe years past. I can tell you it was weighing on all of our minds, you know, coming into today and, and certainly um, will continue. I mean, I, we had some conversations, we'll continue to have conversations with NASCAR. Um, you know, this is, every situation is sort of unique, but this one is a more unique one than I've seen in a while where there's been a lot of communication back and forth on this particular part, especially for this racetrack, um, you know, because they did a parity test in the wind tunnel. And so I think it, it really opened up the door for some miscommunication. And, you know, I don't want to go into any further than that, but um, you know, we uh, will continue to, to just share all the facts and, and, and be transparent with NASCAR as we have so far. Yeah, I, I just say, you know, I was proud of these guys to go. I mean, this, this, this organization has a lot of depth. They've been through a lot of different experiences over the years. And, and you know, to lean on those in, in the, um, you know, in different positions or, or leadership or crew chiefs that have been around so much, you know, whether you're a young guy in this, in, 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 on a team or, or somebody who's been around, it's nice to know you can lean on one another through, through you know, times like that. But I'm, uh, I'm probably most proud of these guys went through that and then they went out there and we had the pole third. You know, the other two guys you know, were fast. They just slipped up a little bit. But all four cars in the top ten today, uh, I think that, you know, really solidified, uh, you know, some of the, the hype and the, the things that were being focused on on Friday that, that you know, these guys have, have speed in the car and there was nothing, not last week, not this week, that was, you know, getting them to victory lane other than a lot of hard work and, and great teamwork. I'm Bob Parker's Fox Sports for Jeff and Rudy, if you want to take it as well. So you have a little bit of the drama on Friday with them taking the pieces. So do you consider, like, winning a race on a weekend where you have maybe a little bit of distraction of more of an accomplishment or it's just that totally kind of separate and not really in your head at all yeah i mean we we have to it, it's a a test in mental strength and that's just what it takes to to be really good in the series so we have to you know think about what the task is you know and we have to focus on this weekend so that's that's what we all did but there is one thing the first parts from last year's scandal maybe the reason why hendrick motorsports is not concerned about the latest drama so what happened last year. As NASCAR examines the confiscated louvers at its research and development facility, the primary focus will probably be on determining whether or not the parts were modified after they were delivered to the team shops. In the previous season, this was the infraction that resulted in fines for Brad Keselowski and RFK Racing. On the other hand, that was not the first time that Keselowski had a problem with NASCAR in 2022. After finding evidence of changed drive pinholes in the wheels of vehicles used by RFK Racing and Team Pensk at the season-opening Daytona 500, NASCAR took the wheels away from those teams' cars. Both teams presented evidence to support their claims that they had implemented safety-related changes that were compliant with the new regulations established for the next-gen car. The explanation was accepted by NASCAR, and neither team was given a penalty for the violation. In spite of the fact that louvers wouldn't pose a threat to driver's safety, Hendrick Motorsports and Colleg Racing would benefit from any evidence suggesting that the louvers weren't produced according to the specifications. So it remains a question till we get to know about what penalties will Hendrick Motorsports faces. That's all for today.
Hope you enjoyed it. Tell us in the comments what you think about the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our videos on NASCAR updates. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.